Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have what looks like a relatively simple example. However, when you look at it, you begin to say, well, what's the trick here? Again, it's all about realizing what the trick is to solve a problem like this. Since the order in the numerator and denominator are equal to one another, it may not be a bad idea to try and divide, longhand division, the denominator into the numerator. So let's go ahead and try that and see what we end up with. So we're going to divide into bx plus a, the denominator, which is fx plus c, and it's better to write it in descending order. Now, fx will go into bx how many times? Well, let's see here. How about 1 over b, or maybe, uh, let's see, this times this gives us this, so we need b over f. That's what we need. All right, sometimes it's a little twisting, trying to figure out what we need to do here, but notice if I multiply b over f times fx, I will get bx. So this times this will give me bx, and this times this will give me a plus bc over f. Now we're going to subtract this from that, so bx minus bx, which is zero, and this minus this gives us an a minus bc over f. Now what we have here is the result of that division. That means that a plus bx over c plus fx can be written as b over f plus the remainder. So plus the remainder divided by fx plus c. Now the remainder can be written as af minus bc over f. So we write over a common denominator divided by fx plus c. Now, this doesn't look too bad because all of this in the numerator is a constant. So whenever we're dealing with constants integrals, that makes it fairly easy. So let's go ahead now and rewrite this integral in terms of the sum of those two and see what we get. So this is equal to, and since b over f is a constant, we can take outside integral sign. So b over f times the integral of dx plus, and we can take all that out of the integral sign as well, so we have af minus bc over f times the integral of dx, the numerator divided by fx plus c or c plus fx, however you want to write that. Okay, now that looks a lot better because this is easy to integrate and this is relatively easy to integrate as well, except notice we have an fx in the denominator, so we need an f dx in the numerator. So we need to multiply the numerator by an f and multiply the denominator here by an f as well, so we don't change anything. And now we're ready to integrate. So this becomes equal to b over f times x. And here we have plus af minus bc over f squared times the natural log of fx plus c, or c plus fx, however you want to write it, plus a constant of integration. And so that's how we integrate that particular example. For those who wondered how I got the solution when I divided the denominator into the numerator, let's go over that again and point out a few helpful hints on how to do that. So again, let's say we're dividing our denominator into the numerator and we're wondering what goes on there. So the idea is that we end up with well, looking for something, let's call it a box, this multiplied times this will give us this. So the way to look at it is a box multiplied times fx, and let me make that a dot so we don't confuse that for an x, that then must equal bx. And so notice that if you divide both sides of this equation by fx, we have a box is equal to bx over fx, and since the x's then cancel, the box is simply b over f. So that's what we need here. And notice that it's sometimes kind of difficult to figure out, but now we multiply b over f times fx, the f's cancel, you end up with a bx, and bf times c gives us bc over f. And that's how it's done. 